Andrew clearly thought that the dust would soon settle, and within just a few months, he was already unsuccessfully asking Mummy for some of his old titles back. Mom! I want to be Admiral of the Fleet again, Mum! I won the uniform with all the gold braids! It was pimping! Guys, just before we get into today's video, let me tell you about a sponsor that is for guys, or I suppose gals, if you're thinking, hmm. I could get an excellent gift for my husband. Maybe his birthday's coming up. Maybe he's just been a good boy. <laughs> Whatever it is, today's sponsor, Sheath, is the gift that uh, he never thought he knew he would need. How did I get that out in one go? That was kind of impressive. Uh, sheath are basically underwear that are designed with men in mind. You know, I'm someone like, I don't like it too tight. I also don't like it too loose. And Sheath basically meets all of those requirements. What you do is you put your legs in the leg holes like you normally do. But that's where things get different basically they've got this pouch system which is uh, designed for your man parts so uh, the two man parts go in here the one man part goes in there and uh, basically it kind of separates things and stops things getting stuck together and just makes everything a bit more comfortable i this is a godsend in summer but it's also like i just wear it in winter as well because you're like yeah why not it's just a little bit better it's just that little tiny well not really tiny bit in the summer it's a lot better and in the winter it's just like well it's just a bit more comfortable isn't it why not <laughs> so sheath moisture wicking super soft material dual pouches for all my man parts nailed that already comfortable cool all in one place oh and now they've got bamboo and mesh options for even more cooling comfort i haven't been sent those sheath get on it i want to try bamboo underwear i had a bamboo towel once i didn't know how it worked but it was always so soft uh, so that's nice. I'd like to try that sheath. Get on it, please. Thank you. So if you're tired of your old uncomfortable underwear, head to sheathunderwear.com and try out the most comfortable pair you'll ever wear. And don't forget to use the promo code BLAZE for 20% off your order. Trust me, your life will be changed. Sheathunderwear.com. Promo code BLAZE. And now, back to today's video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Prisoner's Play. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. I, as always, am your revered leader, Simon. Welcome, welcome. The craziest revelations about the British royal family. <laughs> I think I, I think I put this in the hopper. Like, I have this, like, list of scripts that uh, Danny or Kevin can take, or one of the others. And I put this in there because it was all in the press with, like, Prince Harry and his slack... Slack? Spare. Novel. And... Novel. <laughs> Biography. Autobiography. Sorry. Sorry, Harry. And I thought this would be a good tragic topic. Let's capitalize on that and make some money. And now it's uh, the middle of February and I've truly missed the, the boat on this one, haven't I? But anyway, let's get into it. Oh my God, I just have to say, I couldn't give less of a shit about the royal family. It's just not into me. I'm a Republican. Let's go. Okay. Not like the American Republican. I'm not political like that. Um, Republican, like someone who believes that a country should be a republic rather than a monarchy. You will not stop the republic. Humanity is awakening. Infowars.com. When Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, originally announced their plans to blow raspberries at the British royal family and run away to California in 2020, I didn't blame them one bit. Although it's easy to take pot shots at the royals for living privileged lives in palaces funded by the taxpayer, I wouldn't like the idea of being such a slave to public duty. It seems to me like the life of a royal to typically involves smiling weakly at strangers while pretending to be interested in what they have to say and shaking thousands of hands belonging to blindly devoted diseased peasants who probably didn't even wash them after using the toilet. Filthy peasants. <laughs> Filthy peasants. Yeah, no, it doesn't appeal to me either. I think one of the things that really doesn't appeal to me is that, and I know like everything's a scale and all this sort of stuff, but just to be handed your job and wealth and all of this stuff based on absolutely nothing other than the fact that your blood was previously like... No, I mean, your blood's never been previously anyone else's, but you know what I mean. It's like just handed to you and then you're expected to do all this sh I'll be like that. I probably wouldn't. I'll be like, that sounds chill. <laughs> okay. Who wants to be king? Not me. Certainly not I. Sod that for a game of soldiers. I'd rather be back stacking shelves at Tesco. At least you could go home and be anonymously normal after you've finished your shift. But whilst Harry may have experienced a painful and wretched life as a rich royal and will return to the spare very shortly, that's the book, at least the royal family has made one or two positive tweaks over the last few hundred years. Why, why are they still around? Why? Why do we still have this? It's been a really long time since we were like, oh, Oh yes, God.
God in heaven commands everything and the king is the mouthpiece of God. <laughs> Let him run the show. And in the UK, we've been like, look, look, look. We don't want to get rid of them, but we'll strip away all of their powers so it's just sim uh, a symbol and all this stuff. Like, just get rid of them. And that's something that would probably get my head cut off like 200 years ago. Uh, but it's like, why? Why Why do we have this? Just f*** off. <laughs> Back in the old days, a young prince could get locked away in the Tower of London and mysteriously disappear forever and nobody would bat an eyelid. Harry would have hated that, especially if he couldn't even whinge about it on Oprah. The prince is in the tower. Historians may have got excited in 2012 when the elusive remains of Richard III were finally discovered and dug up from, of all places, a parking lot in Leicester. But I'd have been tempted to leave them there or at least rebury them in the sacred soil of the nearest crazy golf course because Richard III was more than likely a bit of a dick who oversaw the murder of his 12-year-old nephew and the rightful heir to the throne on his ruthless quest for power. What? A king on a ruthless quest for power? Murdering so Never! I am the king! I will punish you. When King Edward VI popped his clogs in 1483, the throne passed over to his 12-year-old son, the imaginatively named Edward V. But the diseased diseased Dese deceased king he probably was diseased before he was deceased Br king's brother our famous parking lot loiterer dick had been given the role of protector for as long as young edward was just a wee slip of a lad and as far as protectors go uncle dick was a bit rubbish you know, funny coincidence, I've got Uncle Dick! <laughs> Shortly after taking on this role, he ushered the de jure king into the Tower of London along with his nine-year-old brother, Richard of Shrewsbury, under the pretense that they needed to prepare for the imminent coronation. But whilst the children were excitedly stitching together, bunting, and making jam sandwiches, it was suddenly decided on the dodgiest of grounds that they were both illegitimate heirs to the throne. The reason given to the public was that the marriage of their parents was now considered invalid as their father had supposedly already entered a pre-contract of marriage with another woman before marrying their uh, before marrying their mother wow that burp tasted like my lunch um that that seems like that he's just looking for an excuse to throw them in a tower and chop their heads off <laughs> and become king parliament bought this crock of sh and uncle dick seized the throne to become richard the third albeit just for a couple of years until he became the last english king to be slain in battle and the first to sharp again over 500 years later in a parking lot in leicester meanwhile the young princes reportedly never left the tower of london and were never seen again it's never been conclusively proven what happened to the missing child princes some have suggested that they were murdered by one of the many prominent suspects who were either trying to get into uncle dick's good books or trying to get their own asses on the throne others have suggested that they died young of natural causes or were secretly secretly freed and lived out the rest of their lives abroad under new identities now nah, mate they were just murdered in the tower they were though that's what happened a few years after the disappearance a couple of pretenders to the throne came forward to falsely claim that they were the younger brother richard of shrewsbury this itself is pretty interesting as you would have thought anyone with a crafty eye on the throne would have claimed to be the young king edward rather than the even younger brother ah oh, no but then that makes it more believable except no one believed it could it be by this point it was already common knowledge that edward was dead but his younger brother may still be alive maybe but most historians would broadly agree with shakespeare's take on the matter in his 1593 play that was basically uncle dick oversaw the murder of the children to prevent any potential future challenges to the throne exactly it's uh, that thing not not laura mipsum <laughs> occam's razor why did i think that occam's razor was laura mipsum <laughs> Ah, oh, whistle. He either carried out the dreadful deed himself, or it was carried out on his orders, quite possibly by his devoted servant, Sir James Tyrell, who reportedly confessed to the crime before his execution in 1502, albeit under torture. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's like, it's not a confession if you're torturing the confession out of someone because they just want you to stop torturing them. That's, <laughs> that's what torture is. The odd thing is that the bones purporting to be the young princes are currently buried in Westminster Abbey. Let's dig them up. The incomplete remains of two young children were excavated from the Tower of London by workmen in 1674 and were interred in Westminster Abbey on the assumption that they were the skeletons of Edward and Richard. But there is now serious doubt over this assumption as a later analysis of the bones in 1933 proved inconclusive. Yeah, but it's now 2023 and we have technology and sh let's grind those bones up let's 
clone them and then see if they look like them. That's how we do it. You have a poison in your mind. And it's now suspected that the bones may date back to a far earlier period, maybe, maybe even long before the tower was even constructed. A modern DNA analysis of the bones would likely solve the matter, but Queen Elizabeth II and the government have consistently blocked such a move on the grounds that it may set a worrying precedent about digging up dead royalty. Well, good news. <laughs> good news. The Queen's dead and there's been like seven new governments in the last year, so let's go. I mean, not new governments, but like prime ministers. And it was only three, but you get my point, right? Let's dig up those bones and let's grind them up and do the clone thing. Let's go. If they did that, would those people be the rightful king? Because they're obviously like, you know, from before, uh, oh, willy. So let's go. And yes, I know that that's not how it really works. <laughs> Just in case anyone got a really small brain and is the comments telling me that they're just DNA test it rather than, you know, grind them up, make clones and see if the clones look like paintings of them. Because that would be insane. But also kind of interesting. Maybe we should do that anyway just because it's fun. Yeah! It's speculated that the new King Charles III may hold a very different view on the matter. Grind those bones, Charles! Let's go! But this could open up a whole new can of royal jelly with no real desirable outcome. If the bones are proven to be the prince's, it confirms that the rightful king of England died under dodgy circumstances. If the bones are proven not to be the prince's, what are we then supposed to do with them? Might as well dump them back in their parking lot in Leicester. Randy Andy, Prince Andrew, Duke of York. Must It blew my mind. Like... I, I can't believe I had this smooth of a brain about this, like the tiniest, smoothest brain you've ever seen. I didn't realize until literally last year that Prince Andrew was the Queen's son. I thought he was like some royal that normally, like, so you know those royals that you've heard about, they're in the press, like when they have a baby or when they, I don't know, something absurd happens to them. Like, there's probably Princess Charlotte, right? I feel like she exists. And it's like, I don't know, what is she, the Queen's like great grandson's cousin's brother's something, right? Like, no one gives a sh but Prince Andrew's her son! I just assumed he was some obscure royal. And he's like prancing around with Jeffrey St um, Starling? Not Starling? Epstein! What is wrong with me and names today? <laughs> I just can't get it right. Jeffrey Starling. Isn't that from um, Hannibal? Hannibal? Silence of the Lambs? What the fuck are you talking about? He must surely go down in history as one of the least popular, popular princes of all time, and on careful consideration, I think it boils down to the fact that he's largely just a bit of a massive bell. In his role as UK's special representative for international trade and investment, <laughs> that sounds like a made-up role, he was often declared to be an over-cocky, pompous and rude national embarrassment who rubbed everyone the wrong way. Yeah, because as the international representative for trade and investment, you're going to be hanging out with a lot of business people who, I don't know, have made their own money and probably don't appreciate the fact that you're like talking to them about business and stuff and you've literally done no business ever you just inherited a bunch of money and then sat on your ass and look, i'm sure he managed some fund or did something but let's be real would prince andrew really be successful if he was just regular old andy you know just common peasant andy probably not Am I get, can i get in trouble there's no like slander rules about the royal family are there like nothing special <laughs> Uh, let's just say all of that was alleged. In a stunning turn of events, a superhero is being sued. Critics have pointed out that the taxpayer annually forked out hundreds of thousands of pounds to fund his extravagant flights. He'd either be jetting off to the nearest golf course or keeping an engagement with a member of a corrupt and repressive regime to thrash out a deal which allegedly would have been a bigger fi financial benefit to Andrew than anyone else. Oh my god, it's so corrupt. Can we just stop with this royal family nonsense, please? Come on, why? Meanwhile, describe Gruntled former palace staff have described Prince Andrew's behavior as being a complete contrast to his more gracious siblings. It's alleged that Andrew would un was unreasonable, unpleasant, verbally abusive, and prone to throwing a hissy fit over the slightest trivial issue. The good news is that these days you're far less likely to see Prince Andrew strutting around the palace like a peacock while telling the gardeners to f*** off. <laughs> he may have been the reported favorite son of Queen Elizabeth II. I... I have... I have the smoothest brain. Danny's written Queen Elizabeth II with an S. Isn't it with a Z? And now I don't know if that's how you spell the Queen's name. Because it is a tie. It's got to be a tie. It's not Elizabeth. It's Elizabeth. One hour later. I knew it. Danny, how smooth is your brain, mate? Come on. What's going on? It's the Queen. Have some respect for her and her wonderful son, Andrew. <laughs> but even she couldn't save him from the Epstein scandal. Well, didn't she? Didn't he? He's not in prison. He's just that he's, 
He's not in prison. He's just free, right? I'm sure he had to pay some money, but he's mega rich. <laughs> Prince Andrew's friendship with the billionaire American financier Jeffrey Epstein first raised eyebrows in 2011 after Epstein, Epstein spent his first stint in prison for procuring a child for prostitution. <laughs> I don't, I'm not laughing at that. I'm laughing at the fact that it's like all of this happened years later. And it's like, if you found out that one of the, I mean, I don't want to be like, you know, you, people get a creep. You don't want to be a fair weather friend. Stand by your friends. Yeah, but when they're acquiring child prostitutes, I think it's okay to be like, no, 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 sorry. I was a fair weather friend. If you acquire child prostitutes, I just like, I have a problem with that for obvious fucking reasons. <laughs> Although Andrew publicly declared that he had cut all ties from Epstein, he was still forced into stepping down from his controversial jet-setting role as the UK's trade envoy. But that was only the tip of the iceberg. After Epstein was charged in 2019 with a long list of charges related to sexual assaults and sex trafficking of minors, Virginia Guffrey came forward. Guffrey? Guffrey? I've read it. I, I don't watch the news. I just read the news. So I don't know how to pronounce that. Guffrey came forward to allege that Epstein had forced her into having sex with Andrew multiple times back in 2001 when she was under the age of legal consent. But Andrew wasn't sweating too much over this. The prince just felt like it was time to turn on the charm. He agreed to be interviewed by Emily Matt, 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 Matt for the BBC programme Newsnight, during which he attempted to put the record straight but made a pig's ear out of the whole thing. At no point in the interview did he express any hint of remorse of expi for Epstein's victims or any regret over his friendship with Epstein, who apparently had provided him with useful connections. He claimed to have no recollection of ever meeting Virginia, despite the photographic evidence which suggested that he was more than faintly acquainted. He claimed that he couldn't have been having sex with Virginia on the one of the specified dates, as he had actually been enjoying a typically royal meal down at Pizza Express in Woking. How would you remember that? That's so specific. I couldn't tell you where I ate last week, let alone... 20 years ago or whatever it was 10 years ago 20 years ago Wait, what year is it yeah that's a long time no one knows this it's suspiciously specific well you got receipts from like <laughs> pizza express in woking 20 years ago i guess he could have a diary couldn't he probably is like one of these people like who keeps their diaries from back in the day so he could have looked it up did he just come to it like that he could have looked it up to be fair like i could go back on google calendar and see where i would when i last ate at pizza express no, it was a long time ago. <laughs> and I wouldn't even put it down in there. I'd just put dinner. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Okay, okay, let's move on. Fascinating tangent, Simon. Let's carry on. A most curious Livoli rebuffed Virginia's claim that she once danced with the profusely sweaty prince in a London nightclub on the grounds that he had temporarily lost the ability to sweat following an adrenaline overdose during his time serving in the Falklands War, a symptom disputed by physicians who reckon that an adrenaline overdose usually causes excessive sweating. Quite remarkably, Andrew was given an immediate opportunity to reshoot segments of the car crash interview, but he declined as he felt everything had gone jolly well. <laughs> <laughs> if they're like, do you want to reshoot it for your benefit, Andrew? Uh, the uh, the correct answer is that to that is like, oh my god, my PR people need to look at this. And secondly, f yes. In August 2022, Virginia Guffrey filed a lawsuit for an unspecified amount of damages against Andrew, accusing him of sexual assault and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Instead of arguing his innocence, Andrew's lawyers seemed more focused on getting the case thrown out on increasingly lame technicalities. They argued that an earlier 2009 sealed settlement between Epstein and Virginia should have protected Andrew from any subsequent lawsuits. They argued that the allegations fell outside of the statute of limitations. They argued that the allegations weren't sufficiently detailed and that Virginia uh, would have been over the age of legal consent anyway. They even tried arguing that Virginia lived in Australia. She did not. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. She lives in Australia. It's like, one, what's that got to do with anything? And two, she's right f***ing there, Andrew. She's in court with us. I don't know if she was, but, you know, it's absurd. They weren't in court. This was obviously, like, pre-trial stuff. But the U.S. District Judge, maybe they were in court, but the U.S. District Judge was having none of this as he allowed the lawsuit to proceed. Shortly afterwards, the palace announced that Andrew would be defending the lawsuit as a private citizen. Uh-oh. And that he would be stripped of all of his royal, royal patronages, military titles and affiliations, and all public duties for the foreseeable future. I mean, the good news is he didn't earn any of it, so... <laughs> It's like we're stripping you of your rank of Admiral of the Fleet, <laughs> which we gave to you. He had effectively been dramatically downgraded to a non-active member of the royal family. During that Newsnight interview, Andrew had indicated that if push came to shove, he would be willing to work with US authorities and testify under oath. When push came to shove, he offered zero cooperation to federal prosecutors, and at one point he was reported to have effectively gone into hiding to avoid being served with the lawsuit. Don't they have, like, 
Diplomatic immunity? I don't, I don't know. Well, I guess he just, oh, it's a civil lawsuit. Does that, yeah, that, that probably, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Just settle it, Andrew. You're fucking rich. So I'm going to pay you $100 to fuck off. Leave me alone. Just give me my trailer and fuck off. Although his lawyers later claimed that Andrew would go before a US jury to fiercely defend his name, that idea swiftly went out of the palace window when Andrew reached a confidential settlement with a woman that he claims to recall never meeting. Andrew, did we have to spend all that money on lawyers? You should have just settled. I could have told you that, Andrew. You'd have saved yourself a lot of embarrassment. Just settle, oh, when she first came to you, because we've seen the picture with you. We've heard the sweaty lies, Andrew, alleged lies. Just you should have settled early and then no one, we wouldn't be making this video, Andrew. Andrew, 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 disappointing. No wrongdoing was admitted, but the undisclosed settlement was estimated to be somewhere in the region around 12 million pounds, <laughs> which is a load of money, but also cool. And it does raise the question, particularly amongst British taxpayers, who exactly footed the bill? It better be him. It better come from, like, his private money that he was given or whatever. They own lots of land and stuff. It's not like the royal family is just funded by the taxpayer. Although I guess they do get some taxpayers' money. They have, like, this royal stipend or whatever they get every year. But they also own tons of because they're super posh and rich. So just sell one of your, like, townhouses, Andrew. You'll be fine. Andrew clearly thought that the dust would soon settle, and within just a few months, he was already unsuccessfully asking Mummy for some of his old titles back. Mum! I want to be Admiral of the Fleet again, Mum! I won the uniform with all the gold braids! It was pimping! Mum! And his older brother, King Charles, was quick to make his position clear after recently taking the throne when he effectively booted Andrew out of Buckingham Palace by closing his office. Ah! The odds of Prince Andrew ever making a triumph for return to royal duties are now just slightly higher than those of the missing princes of the tower. Oh, Andrew, we all feel... No, no one cares. No one cares. No one cares. No one cared to begin with. You were like a trade ambassador. That no one... I'd never... I didn't even know you were the Queen's son, Andrew. That's how little I cared. Spare. I don't really blame Prince Harry and Meghan Markle for seeking the exit from this pantomime shit show. In 2020, the couple announced that they would be stepping down from royal duties and dividing their time between the UK and a new home in California. Apparently unhappy with the press intrusion and lack of privacy, it later transpired a ton of other stuff. The couple declared that they were working toward the building of a new career, which would involve complete financial independence from the monarchy and its generous handouts. Yeah, I mean, because you're like, how much? They must have got paid an absolute shit ton of money for that netflix show and their podcast and all of this stuff it's just like yeah of course because like people are gonna watch that because it's the royal family it's weird for some reason even americans care about this nonsense yes i would have had more respect for both harry and megan if this bold new career away from the suffocating confines of the royal family hadn't pretty much just revolved around raking in a fortune for the continual trashing of the royal family from which they were supposedly trying to escape yeah if, if prince harry started a podcast about football or something and just called it hazard's football podcast no one would listen i mean a few people would listen but no one would really care because they just want to hear him bitch about the royal family and talk some shit these nasty nuggets are often dished up in very carefully orchestrated drip feeds of tantalizing new tidbits over the course of interviews, documentaries, and books. It seems as if they're always holding something back for the next lucrative chapter. It's a good play. Whoever's running this show, because I don't think it's them, like whoever their business manager is, who's arranging all of this stuff, is a big brain genius, and he's probably getting like 10% or whatever for all of it. So you're, whoever's that is. Big break. Harry was always a bit more of a free spirit than his older brother William and more prone to courting controversy. He admitted underage drinking and smoking weed in his youth, the latter of which got him sent to rehab for a whole day by his father, essentially to be scared off by the state of other patients. He also found himself in hot water in 2005 when he attended a costume party dressed as a Nazi officer, which is something you don't do as a regular person. You definitely don't do as prince harry like what were you thinking he later apologized and conceded that it was a poor choice still it could have been worse he could have gone dressed up as black-faced adolf hitler yeah yeah he could have <laughs> holy shit, danny following harry and megan stepping down from royal duties he'd described by the press as megxit 
cringe. Uh, one of the very first things, I'd never heard of that before. And one of the first things he did, one of the first things they did agree to was an interview with Oprah Winfrey, which wasn't tacky or cheesy at all. Broadcast on CBS and with reportedly no fee paid to the rebel roles, the interview did raise some genuine concerns. Megan revealed that her unsupported lonely life of isolation within the family had driven her to suicidal thoughts. It was alleged that a royal had expressed worried worries about their future children having dark skin tones. <laughs> Get out. I don't want to believe that's true, but also I do. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't want to believe it, but I do believe it. <sighs> Come on, if you're racist and you know it, clap your hands. What the fuck? Their son Archie would not be given a title, and he wouldn't receive any security, something which Meghan implied could be down to his mixed race, although it's also widely known that Charles has long been planning a streamlined monarchy. Yeah, honestly, even if Charles was thinking that in his brain, he's not going to say it out loud or say that that's the reason, at, at all in any way or even implied. But there certainly appeared to be a big dollop of double standards seeping out from Buckingham Palace. Harry and Meghan immediately lost their security following their departure, yet Prince Andrew was allowed to keep his security after being so unceremoniously downgraded at an estimated cost of around three million pounds a year to the taxpayer, a cost which King Charles is now reported to be covering privately whilst leaving Harry and Meghan to fend for themselves. I don't know why that would be. Why would that be? And in the immediate aftermath of the Oprah interview, the palace released a dubious statement which announced that they were investigating still unproven allegations that Meghan had bullied senior members of palace staff. But there, why you... what he's doing? Why are you bullying me? It's curious how they were shouting this from the battlements, yet they barely had a word to whisper from the wine cellars when Prince Andrew was accused of sexual assault. The much hyped six part 2021 Netflix series, Harry and Meghan, part of a. I just saw the amount of money they're getting! Part of a five year, $100 million deal with a platform turned out to be an overlong damp squib a hundred million dollars i am sometimes blown away by the amount of money that floats around in this world of content because it's like i don't know i do fairly well a <laughs> hundred million dollars well but like you see like joe rogan gets like a couple hundred mil for his podcast on spotify for a few years those guys going on that daily wire or whatever like ben shapiro's thing and he was like trying to get those dudes like um Oh god, the the guy with the change my mind, which sometimes pops up on my homepage. And I'm like, why would I want to watch this American political bullshit? Um whatever his name is, and he was getting like offered like mil tens of millions of dollars a year and turning it down. And I'm just like, holy sh I gotta start making like controversial political content. I gotta get a little bit racist. Aside from just a joke. Aside although <laughs> So much money. So much money. <laughs> Aside from the inclusion of occasional accusations that other members of the royal family have been trading stories and lies to the press, the main revelation appeared to be Harry's sudden dramatic realization at the age of 38 that there's a hierarchy to the family. It's the royal family, Harry! Of course there's a hierarchy. It's very- you could look it up on Wikipedia. There's like king, prince, duke, count, peasant, or like however it goes. And there's like a million in between. There's like, there's ranks for everything. The whole thing's built on ranks. It's ranks on ranks on ranks, Harry. Did you never look this up on Wikipedia? Weren't you curious where you sat? You're third, by the way. Maybe now less. The expensive disappointment was largely down to Harry purposefully saving all the really juicy stuff for his memoir Spare, which would be released less than a month later and quickly became the fastest selling non-fiction book of all time. What is going on in this world? <laughs> He's going to be a billionaire. Throughout the course of the 416 pages of the ghost-written book, Harry dishes up an endless flow of mind-blowing insights in his life, like into his life. I bet that's sarcasm, isn't it, Danny? He lost his virginity to an older woman in a pub car park. He killed 25 Taliban fighters during two hours of tour in Afghanistan, but likened them to chess pieces on a board. That's fairly intense. He's taken cocaine and magic mushrooms and once ended up taking the talking to the toilet and the bin in Courtney Cox's bathroom. The Nazi costume at the fancy dress party? It was all William and Kate's idea those rotten scoundrels who cares who cares if this wasn't him this would just be a normal person's life the book largely comes across as a sulky rage against being the spare rather than the heir and perhaps the ultimate revelation is that the royal family can be just as human and dysfunctional as any other or more so and to ever to, to nobody's surprise at all but there also seems to be a great hypocrisy at work here harry has constantly complained about the media and family leaks and a lack of privacy yet he's embarked upon a non-stop media campaign to leak his family's dirty laundry in a very calculated manner. Money, money, money! And there's almost certainly more to come. Harry has recently indicated that his family would never forgive him if he ever spilled the beans and all the really good stuff. And by the way, a second memoir is already in the works. Get ready.
It's difficult to figure out what Harry actually seeks to gain from all of this. An official apology? Revenge? Maybe it was just always about the money. Charles had apparently made it clear that spare Harry would never get anywhere near the same financial support as heir William. Well, obviously, because William's going to be the king one day. Yet he was not allowed to earn money from commercial enterprises as a working royal. William may get to wear the crown one day, but Harry is now the one pulling in hundreds of millions from a private income. Still, if nothing else, it's taken some of the heat off sweaty Uncle Prince Harry. Yes, thank you for watching. Wants to be king? Not me. Certainly not I. 